kufika katika ibada yetu ya leo ni furaha kuwaona wote um, wale ambao tumeweza kufika kuna mengi bwana ametutendea juma hili tuko na shuhuda za kushukuru Mungu za matendo makuu ya Mungu kila mmoja wetu najua kuna jambo unaweza ukashuhudia yale bwana amefanya na kwa hivyo ningependa tukue tuna huyo moyo wa kumshukuru Mungu kwa sababu ametutenda mema amen and to our friends who have come to be with us may the lord bless you for choosing to be here uh, baba na mama faith thank you so much for choosing to be here may the lord bless you uh, mrs david mrs somondi the lord bless you so for choosing to be here it's such a blessing and all of us who are here it's a blessing to be here this morning now we are starting a series uh, i love teaching and and preaching at the same time and there are times god will give me something that i may not know exactly when it will end and this is exactly what is happening again if you can call just taking you back to the beginning of the year we said there are six key choices you remember there are six key choices that will catapult you to your destiny you remember six key choices that catapult you to your destiny that there are choices we are making and we talked about the year 2023 and we said these are choices that we are making in the year 2023 and we believe by making these choices god will push us god will catapult us to our destiny amen and one of the key choices that we dealt with in the month of january was the choice to be serious with kingdom matters the choice to be serious with kingdom matters. We said we have to choose to be serious with our God. We have to choose to be serious with kingdom business. Na tukasema kanisa kuna venye tumefanya kazi tu kwa udhaifu, tumefanya kazi ya Mungu kwa uregevu, lakini wakati umefika we be serious. I am not very sure that we are yet there. At least to some extent we are trying to be serious with God's things. But we are not yet there. But it's a choice that we are making PMI Thicker Road is a choice we are making as sons of God that we must be serious with God. Right? Look at your neighbor and tell him oh, you must be serious with kingdom matters. Vitu za Mungu lazima zichukuliwe na uzito na heshima ambayo zinastahili. Ninapoangalia bila tunafanya kazi ya Mungu mara nyingi tunaifanya kwa jia ambayo haistahili kabisa. Lakini naomba sisi kama wana wa Mungu ambao tumepata huu ufunuo, tuifanye kazi ya Mungu kama kazi ya Mungu. Amen. Kazi ya Mungu si kama ya mwanadamu. In fact, I remember when we were working with the fundi this week, hakuwa ananielewa tukifanya kazi hapa because there are some things I was telling him this has to be done this way, this has to be done this way and I was looking at his eyes sometimes ananiangalia ni nini ni nini hangetamka lakini namuona ana ni kama ananza ni nini nakusumbua pasta but I kept insisting on him that God's work must be done in the best way possible because God deserves the best amen God deserves the best so whatever you are doing in the name of the lord ensure it is the best possible right so if you are putting an altar for the lord if it's possible if it's a corner let that corner be the best corner possible jua corner inatengenezwa na mkono wa mwanadamu si ndio lakini hata hivyo hiyo corner ijaribiwe ikuwe the best possible so you would come here with funda mwambia hii corner bado anatengeneza tena inakataa na mwambia bado tengeneza tena mpaka ikafika mahali nikaona nimemsumbua sana nikaacha one of uh, the people that we were working together here ako hapa anakumbuka nilikuwa nasimama pale nasema ile line bado ile line bado and they couldn't understand what is this that is disturbing me the thing is this god deserves the best amen So even as we are talking about expansion as we are talking even this altar sasa venye ina kai vingi mnaona kama hii ni best ukiangalia ukweli hii ni best bado kuna kazi amen because this should be the best place because we are calling it the altar of the lord kama ni nyumba ya Mungu na ni ya Mungu aliye hai Mungu ambaye tunaamini ni mwenye vyote alafu inakaa namna hii hai hiyo si image ya Mungu wetu 
So the first choice we agree that we are making this year is choice to be serious with kingdom matters. The way you serve your God, the way you talk to your God, the commitment that you have for your God must be serious and must be seen as so. So friends who have come today, I want to say it's a choice that we are making to be serious with kingdom matters. Right? Choice number two we said we are choosing to change our mindset. Remember, there are choices that we're making so that we can be catapulted to our destiny. The second choice we said is choice for mindset change. And I have taken considerable amount of time talking about mindset change. Right? I am sure we are somewhere on that. Why is it so important? We said your life is a reflection of your thoughts. Yeah? So you have really to work on your thoughts because it's your thoughts that gives birth to your life. And you have really read bad on that. So I don't want to go back to that because we have only come from that. And um, now we are going to the third choice. The third choice is a choice to build quality destiny relationships. A choice to build quality destiny relationship. Choice to build quality destiny relationship. Of course, I can see the way we had arranged them in terms of order. Uh, we changed the order. It was not casted on the stone that has to follow each other. So we have changed the order. Choose to build quality destiny relationship. That's what I'm introducing now. And I will by God's grace, together with other ministers, God will help us to push this uh, to some level. So we are choosing. Tell your neighbor, it is time to choose. Yes, you It is time to choose to build quality destiny relationships. Not just relationship, but quality relationships. And that's what we are beginning today. Choice number four was choice to build capacity for your God-given assignment. A choice to build capacity for your God-given assignment. It is a choice that you make to build your capacity, to empower yourself so that you can fulfill the assignment of God upon your life. I'm not sure whether this year we'll be able to tackle that choice, but I want to encourage you, purpose in your heart. Choose in your heart that you'll build your own capacity. Yes? Build your own capacity. Because every one of us, the way we are seated here, we have an assignment in the kingdom of God. We have an assignment. So for you to be able to do what God has called you to do and do it well, you must build your capacity. And that's why we said this year, the beginning of the year, we said those who need to go back to school, go back to school. And we said anybody can be schooled. Those who need to learn something new. We say it, even learning to do something new is empowerment. Right? Just learn something. Don't just be used to what you know. Purpose to learn something more. Expand your capacity. And especially towards your God-given assignment. But that leads us to one big question. Do you know your assignment? Here or not? Do you know why you're here? Do you know why God has created you? When you find yourself in such a family like PMI, the family church, the way we are seated here as a family, when you find yourself in this family, have you ever asked yourself, why am I here? Why has God brought me here? Now seek for that answer, and once you get the answer, try to move towards building capacity so that you can fulfill that assignment. Choice number five, was a choice to guard your life. Thank God for uh, Ken, who tackled this to some level. Choice to guard your, your life. And he said, you need to keep watch of the gates of your life. And last Sunday, Ken talked to us about three key gates. And probably next Sunday, but one will be talking of more three key gates that you need to guard. Guard your life. It's a choice that you make to guard the gates of your life. And the last choice was 
choice to contend for your God-given inheritance. You have to fight for that which God has given unto you. The land is already given, but the children of Israel had to push the enemies out of the land so that they can take possession. God has already released your blessing, but you have to push for them to become a reality in your life. That is the choice we are talking about. The choice to contend for your God-given inheritance. In simple terms, you are saying, fight for your blessings. We don't fight a physical fight, but we know how to fight our battles. A singer sang and said, this is how I fight my battles. How do you fight your battles? Make a choice to fight for that which is yours. Hallelujah. So let's go to our choice, choice number three. On this series, I want to call it, the topic I'm calling it, investing in quality relationships for quality life. Hmm. Thank you for putting it there. Let's read it together. What is the topic? Investing in quality relationships for what? For quality life. We cannot afford just to relate anyhow. And we cannot just assume relationships. I am keen on the word that I'm using there. Investing. Tell your neighbor, you have to learn to invest. Those of us here who are investors, it is never easy to invest. It is something that you learn. It is something that you practice. So for us as the body of Christ... We must learn how to invest in relationships. And not just in relationship, but in quality relationship. Why? Because we desire to live a quality life. Amen? At the end of the day, we want to see a man of quality, a woman of quality. Move to other man of Mtu ambaye akisimama mbele ya watu anadhamana yake ana heshima yake is a quality person. Mara nyingi kanisani tumekuwa na ile mawazo ya bora. Bora uhai. Bora iwe. Bora ifanyike hata kama itafanyikaje bora. Uh -uh. We must get to a point as the children of God where we live quality life because our God is also a quality God. Pastor Felix taught us here from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, that God has chosen us out of darkness. He has pulled us from darkness unto his marvelous light so that we may become a display of his glorious light. The way you walk, walk as a man of God. Those of us who are working in a place of work, Work as a man of God. Not just a man, but as a man or a woman of God. Offer quality. Those of us who are in production, don't just produce substandard things. Produce quality things. Amen? Quality. Tell your neighbor, we need to live a quality life. Let's have quality interaction. We don't just meet and just talk nothing. Let's talk things that are building us. Things that are making us better. So in this series, I'll be talking to us on why and how to invest in quality relationships. Do you think it's a good topic for us? Yeah? For you to become a quality man, a quality woman, you must be ready to invest in quality relationships. They say, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Show me your friends. Don't tell about me. Don't tell me about you. Just show me your friends and then I'll do what? I'll tell you who you are. That statement is not just a statement to a delete. Because what it means is you are just as your friends. Hmm. Hallelujah. I know we'll get down there.
to the point that where I ask you, who are your first five best friends? Start thinking about it. Because at some point we'll come there. My best wako wale unaizaita wase wako. Si una ile bogi yako. How wase wako hao? Hiyo rende yako. Five, the top five. Who are they? Mashao iko aje. If they don't love the Lord, if they are not serving God, if they are not a good example, beware. Why? Church this morning I want to introduce this topic by saying the relationship matters. Amen? The relationship does what? Matters. The relationship matters. And I want us to read a few scriptures, probably just a few because my time is uh, limited. Let's begin with Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Verse 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Relationship matters. Please don't forget that, for those that are making notes, mark it, underline it, relationships matters. Now, Ecclesiastes 4, verse number 9. What does the Bible say? Let's read it together up to verse 12. The Bible says what? Two are better. Now, let's read it as the word of God. Sour? See, this is the word of God. What does the word of God say? One, two, three, go ahead. Two are better. Why? Let's pause and digest that a little bit. So, one is good, right? One is good. But two, according to Solomon the wise man, Two are better than. So there are things that you can do alone. But there are greater things that you can do when you're in a relationship. Because two is better than. Those of us who are attending the leadership class, when we are doing leadership empowerment here, we learned that one is a too small number to make any significant influence. One is a too small Number. Moja ni kidogo sana mpaka wa sohiri wakasema kidole kimoja. Wee jaribu na yako moja. Kimoja kifanyi nini? Now Solomon says, two are better than one. Why? Because they have what? A good reward. What Solomon is saying, the moment they start doing something together, they will do much more. They will do more than what one person can do. And that is a simple principle in life. Sindio? It's something that is common sense. We can say common sense. But someone says common sense is not always common sense. It may not be that common as we think. When two begin doing something, they will achieve more. So relationship matters because people, when they come together, they do more. Right? So we are saying what? Relationship matters. Now, statement number two that is very key. Relationship is a currency. Relationship is a currency. Do you know relationship can do what money can do and at times more than what money can do? Unajua hivo? Usiano wakati mwingine unafanya mambo ambao pesa haziwezi kafanya na uhusiano unaweza kufanyia mambo ambao pesa zaweza zikafanya okay you cannot ignore relationship because it is a currency you why why do you how do you use a currency a currency is a form of transaction right it's a form of exchange yeah? so we use money to buy exchange goods and and services. Business class, eh? Simu nakumbuka B.Ed. Na ilikuwa inaeko afternoon. Siji kwa nilikuwa inaeko afternoon. Those classes. Unakumbuka teacher wako venya ilikuwa na hitu, eh? business. Now, money 
can do so much. And the Bible says, don't ignore money because money answereth all things. It is important. Money is important. Now, just as money is important, by the way, nani pesa hapa? Ni mimi peke yangu, mimi sipendi pesa. Kuna mwingine apendi pesa kama mimi? Au nilikuwa nafikiri Jackie anainua mkono yeye apendi pesa. Money is good. And we believe God for money. Mapesha. Mapesha ni mega. If it was no money or not for money, this quality sound wouldn't be having it this morning. This mic cost money. And for it to give you good sound, it has to be a quality mic. I remember the day we were buying this mic. I remember when we were buying this mic, even how much it costed us. It's a good mic and it costs some good money. And we are getting even better mics. So we are getting better mics. Yeah. Ah, I can see them coming, better mics. Na sababu sasa hapa tume expand. Na maana kuna watu walikuwa nakanga hapa kwa ukuta wanatamani isonge hapa wajisukume na hapo hivyo. Sasa tutawekea stand hapa. Na mic zao ndiwaache kusukumana na ukuta. Good mics are coming. That was the point. But I'm saying relationship is what? Is a currency. What money can do, relationship is able to do. The same and at times even more. Kuna places tumeenda ama tumekua as a result of relationship. If it was money, money, money would not have taken us there. But friendship and relationship has taken us to those places. There are things that have been done to us as a family, as, as a couple, through relationship and friendships that money would not have done. Do you know there are times you need people more than money? Kuna wakati tunangangana sana na pesa hapa tunasahau watu. Lakini wapendwa, wakati unataka tufikirie relationship. Mana mara nyingi tunaharibu usiano tukitafuta nini? Pesa. Si tulikuja na Nairobi kutafuta pesa. Lakini pamoja na kutafuta pesa, nataka tutafute pesa kwa wingi maana hata ile sanctuary tutajenga hapa itahitaji pesa mingi. Na tuamini ya kwamba watu tu watoke inje watulete pesa. Tunaamini Mungu atubariki tufanya kazi ya Mungu, si ndio? Mungu atutumie sisi tufanya kazi ya Mungu. Maana wakija kutoka nje wanakuja na wanatembea na baraka zetu. Sisi tunabaki. Unaona wale watu walijua kwamba wanajengea ngwa chachi. Wanajengewa chachi lakini wenye kujenga ndio wenye kubarikiwa. Wenye kuishi ndani yake wana wanaangalia tu watu wakibarikiwa. I can't afford to allow that to happen. I want to be a partaker. I want to be part of what God is doing in his people and through his people. So, friends, tunafanya mambo mengi kutafuta pesa, which is good. But I'm challenging us today, let's think relationship, because relationship is what? Is a currency. So, we're saying, wakati mwingine, we just need people. Wale tumewe shawa hipoteza, a loved one. Of course, people comes to comforters. I want to ask you, mwenye alikutumia pesa na mwenye alikuja kukua na wewe, let's be honest, mwenye alikutumia pesa na mwenye alikuja kakaa na wewe wakatuwa mungumu, who do you remember more? The people that will walk with you, the people that were there with you, you remember them more. Why? Because relationship matters. Money is good. But there are things that relationship will do that money cannot do. Now going back to the Bible, man is made for interactions. Vile tumeumbwa, ndiyo mwana mungu alitupatia mdomo, ili tuweze kuonge. Kama hange penda tuonge, hange tupatia mdomo. Na hange tupatia moyo ambao unapenda watu na wengine mio yao wametumia kuchukia watu. But I'm saying, man is made for what? For interactions. Venye mungu ametumba, ameumba ili tuweze kusika na kushirikiana na wenzetu. 
Look at the creation when God made Adam. The first word God said, let us make man. Let us make man. And make him in our image and our likeness. We want one who looks like us. Why would God go out of his way to make, they were already okay, right? God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy, they were okay. Or do you think there was trouble in heaven? There was no trouble. They were just okay. But they felt we need one like us so that we can relate. And that's why when God made Adam, what did he do? He breathed his breath unto his nostrils. God gave a part of himself to man so that they can have a way of connecting. Men and women, God has given us the ability to relate, the ability to connect because we were made relational beings. First, we were made to relate with God and two, to relate with others. So the spirit of God that was put in a man was to enable him to relate with his maker. Because God is a spirit. And for you to connect with him, you must connect through the spirit. So man is a spiritual being, just like his father is a spirit. Or is spirit. So for the spirit to connect to the spirit, there must be a way. And that's why God put his spirit in man. Are we together, church? So that we can connect. So that we can relate. Because we were made for interactions. When God looked at Adam, he said, Adam, you're doing so well. In fact, the work that we gave you of naming the animal, you're doing so well. I think by that time, I'll be quite relevant. This guy is doing a good job. So God visited him and looked at him working, doing his things, and God said, Ah, you're doing so well, but there is something that you're lacking. You need a companion. You need someone that you can relate with at a close level. The Bible says at the cool of the day, God used to visit them in the Garden of Eden. Relationship. Interactions. Men and women we were made for relationships. That's why what was psychology wanatuambia. Ukiona mtu ama wone mtoto ameanza kujifunga peke yake kwa bedroom ama ameanza kukaa peke yake ame withdraw what they call withdraw signs start being worried hata hapa kwa church kama mtu alikuwa na interact na watu alafu sasa yeye anakuja church anakuja anaangalia vitu tu hivi ibada ikiisha ameenda hata salimi watu anaangalia tu akienda tunaanza kuogopa huyu mtu anaweza kuwa na anaka shida fulani why we were made to interact. Have you imagined that we were made to church hivi, tunasema amen, alafu kila mtu kabagi yake. Thank God for Koinonia Fellowship. Do you know why we have Koinonia Fellowship? Because right now, I'm the only one who is speaking. Sindio? Nini ni wapatia tu nafasi, maybe I could respond here and there, but I'm the one who is speaking. But in Koinonia teams, when women meet here, men meet there, warriors meet behind there, the children meet in the field and other places. They are interacting. The purpose of that fellowship is so that we can talk one to another. Right? Now, sometimes, even what has been taught here, we go to our groups and we practice it. There was a time I was thinking of giving us some lessons of what we have learned on a, on a, on a service. We go and apply it in our koinonia groups. Maybe it might help some of us. Because uh, pastor anaongea kizungu mingi. Ingine inampita. Ingine sahi alikuwa nafikiria vitu zingine ikiongewa. So, lakini kwa koinonia group anaeza uza. Na by the way, alikuwa na maanisha. Akisema two are better than one. Alikuwa na maanisha. And probably it can get or it can sink better than it is right now. So, what are we saying? We were made for what? For interaction. Back to our scripture. What does the Bible say? We are reading up to 12. Two. Uh-huh. Because they have a good reward for so they can do more. We are agreeing on that. Number one, it is important to have relationships because through relationships we can do more. They have a reward. Uh -huh. Number two, next verse, ten. Let's read it together. One, two, three, God. The Bible says, for 
If they fall, uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Especially at your mzito. You know, kuna mahali tulikuwa siku moja mtu akaanguka alafu tukaangaliana nani atainua huyu mtu So Bible says two are better than one because if they fall one will lift up his companion but woe unto him who thinks akosawa and he walks alone when he falls the Bible says there will be no one to help him up. Akianguka akopeke yake. Tell your neighbor the relationship matters. Because there is a time you need someone to lift you up. Amen? All of us, there will be a time. Ata kama wewe ndi endovu. Kuna wakati utaitaji. Mutu wakukuinua. Ndona ina documentary ndovu ikiwa imeanguka kwa mtaro. Sasa niambieni ndovu akianguka kwa mtaro nani atamtoa? Watu wangapi watainua ndovu wa mtoe kwa mtaro? So thank God for technology. Ilibidi watafute maadhi movers. Ndio ndovu afanye nini? Askumwe atolewe kwa shimo kwa mtaro aweze kutokea so wengine wetu tulikuwa ni tuko wazito ukianguka inahitaji wase kadhaa waweza kufanya nini kukuinua lakini cha muhimu ni hiki kila mmoja wetu at one point in life you need somebody who will lift you so relationship matters right aha let's read 11 11 the Bible says what? Again, let's read it together again. If two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one Niambie ni how can one be warm alone? Aongeze buffet. Eh? Na socks ile ya winter. Eh? Na hot water bottle. Eh? Na nini nyingine? How can one keep himself or herself warm alone? But if two lie together, the Bible says they do what? They keep each other warm. Let's think about this. It's not just the ritual interpretation. There is warmth in togetherness. Amen? When we come together, we warm each other up. I, I, I like discussion. When we are discussing of a matter, I am seeing it from this angle. This other person is seeing it from that other angle. And another one from that angle. When we put our minds together, we feel excited. We feel energized. There is warmth in oneness. So when we come together, we keep each other warm. Relationship does what? Matters. Amen? Relationship does what? Matters. Because when we come together, we keep each other warm. Unaweza niambia kwako uko na hita. It is not enough. You need the warmth of friends. In a church, you can't tell me you survive. Mimi watu sipendi vile watu wanakaa hata vile watu kuwa kwa church. Mimi ndio maana upenda kukaa peke yangu wewe. Haukuitwa kukaa peke yako. Amen. Sio kanisani tuko na all characters. Mimi lazima mimi mkiona ninatembea peke yangu. Uzida vitu nimeona dunia hii. Na wewe umeonyesha watu ngapi dunia hii? <laughs> you need people. Amen. You need Unasikia wengine wakisema agotire boko ya dweki. You need people. Now, as I sit. Next verse. What does the Bible say verse 12? Aha, uh -huh, we are reading it together. The Bible says what? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Though one may be overpowered by another. Tukishikana na mtumishi hapa tulimane hapa. Kuna moja anaweza ramea mwingine. Sawa sawa. Lakini tukiongeza nguvu tukue wawili. Mse mwenye alikuwa ametremea tutamuhai. Na tukifika watatu hata ajaribu kutufinya hata kama ni Goliath kaweka yeye chini. That is the power of relationships. What does this mean? We are stronger together. So relationship matters because we are stronger together. I thank God last Sunday our brother Karoga here taught us powerful things from the bee family. And we were able to see that every bee call it a drone, call it a worker, call it queen, they all have different functionality and all of them matters. And I like where Karoga stopped last Sunday. I think he's speaking from there in the next service. Don't miss the next service. He said that the weakest of us or the weakest part of the body, the one that we consider the most unimportant according to us, it is also very important. Tell your neighbor, including your waliogo. Now somebody is asking, waliogo nae huyo ni nani? Every part in your body matters. At a pancreas. It matters. Kame jificha sana. Lakini kakipata shida, tunakupeleka idia. Ka pancreas. Manaiso sike sana. When the pancreas work, the liver works, the kidney works, the heart works, the eyes works. Somebody is healthy and complete. But when one part fails, every other part fails. Mtu anaperekangwa India juu ya pancreas. Kapatika dogo, lakini mwili yote ndaekwa kwa ndege. Ya kasemu kamoja tu. Friends, Look at your neighbor and tell him or her you are important. Si muambie kama unamaanisha. Hata kama ulikuwa na gekoro, huku unasikia kama hako important. Sasa muambie, enyewe kwa sababu pasta amenisaidia ni meona. You are important. Amen. Everyone is important. When one is overpowered by another, but get another one ata kama ni kadogo tu kana shikiria hapa that power is very important we are stronger when we get together so peer my thicker relationship does what matters and i want to give you some questions you go home with this we'll pick from there next sunday write these four, five questions number 1 do you have a person or persons you can call in your hour of need. And be sure, do you have a person or persons? You can call in your hour of need and be sure they will respond appropriately and promptly. Do you have a person or persons? You can call in your hour of need and be sure they will respond appropriately and prompt. Una mtu ama watu ambao uko na uhakika ukiwaita wakati unahitaji msaada wataweza kurespond vile inavyohitajika na kwa wakati unaohitajika. Kindly when you go home think of just three. List down three people. Now, if possible, you can leave out family because mungina ataniambia my mother, my father, wachana na your mother and father. Na wajua, najua venye mnataka kuibia mtiani. Think beyond your family circles. Friends, right? Because you are talking about quality relationships. Of course, I know a, a relative will come in handy. That's okay. But let's think beyond our family circles. Who is this person that you can call? And you know for sure, nikiita fulani atatokelezea. 
Question number two. Do you have a person you can share with your secret and go home sleep without nightmares? Do you have a person you can share with your secrets and go home sleep without nightmares? Do you have someone? A person you can share with your secrets and go home sleep without nightmares. You are at peace. You know, I shared with a friend and indeed that is a friend. I am at peace. Do you have someone? Question three. Si huyo mtu utaandika hapo. Kama uko naye na kama hauna B flank and say wenyewe ukweli sina. Kwa saa hii kwa sababu yule nilikuwa naye Kenya alinifanyia. Ni mimi najua. Sawa. Ile trauma niko nayo hata sasa sitaki kuimagine kushare na mwingine. That's okay. Just be genuine. Question three. Do you have a person or people that you are growing together. Do you have a person or a group of people, a people that you are growing together? Are you in a circle of friends or persons? They may be your colleagues. Uh, they may be a certain chama or whatever. Do you have a person or a people that you are growing together? Can you take serious these questions? They are important. We will begin from there next Sunday. Question four. Question four. What value do you add to your circles of relationship and vice versa? What value do you add to your circles of relationships? What value are you adding to those friends that you have? And what value are they adding to you? Right? So what value do you add to your circles or circles of relationships and the other side, the vice versa of the same. What value? And the last one, which is very important, the last one, question five. To memorize number four, ama kuna wale bado amebaki wakiandika. It is on. I can say kama malimu. It is on the board. It's on the screen. So, what value do you add to your circles of relationships or friends? And vice versa. What value are they adding to you? Number five, the last one. Go think about these hard questions. They are hard questions. They are not just simple questions. They are hard questions. And I want you to go take serious time and think about these questions. Why should people connect with you? The last one. Why should people connect with you? Why should they connect with you? Why should you have friends around you? Why should people Why should people connect with you? Let's rise on our feet and pray. Tusimame kwa migu yetu, tukaweza kuona. Sina mwingine wa Matena Signa Waku Abu Yira Yiwe Mimi Sina Signa Yes, you can be saying you are the only one that I have to worship, but I want to also ask you that you pray that God may help you to have quality friends, quality relationships, so that as you worship God, 
you can worship as a quality person who also is in quality relationships. Some of us has hidden there that I just serve God, I just worship God, I just relate with God. People don't matter. I want to say people matter. So pray to God that you help you to have quality relationships. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me hear you pray. Yes, it's time to ask God to help you. Probably there are people that you are also considering friends. But probably they may not be friends. Maybe you have circles of friends. But you need to, invest, to start investigating the quality of life that they are adding unto you. The value that they are adding to you as a child of God, as a business person, as a family man. Those friends that you have, are they making you better? Are they helping you to grow? Ask Lord to help you get the right friends around you. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for challenging us to start thinking relationships, to start thinking friendships, and take time to look critically at who are our friends and why are they our friends and why should we maintain them as our friends and why not. Help us, King of all the glory, as we begin this service, that, Lord, we get deep insight that will help us. We pray that your word will speak to us, that we may know how to invest in quality relationships. Be glorified, Master Jesus, for today, and this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you reflect on what you have learned today. God put it to practice, and may the Lord be with you in Jesus' name.